He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath said to his seal that God is true. But he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The Father loveth the Son. Now what before Jesus, there were the prophets. And God in these last days has spoken to us by his son. And there's a lot of controversy and a lot of talk about love in 2019. I've heard it over the past few years. And what inspired this, this, you know, this video, this lesson is the fact that God blessed me so much showing me his love and also allowing me to see this love with my own seed just looking at them sleep and looking at my son and, and how much they love us and I just want to really say what love really is you know and everyone can have their opinions and they can have what they've been taught but we have been taught by God and I'm going to go to the word to find out everything, especially spiritual things like love. And we can just end it right now, folks. We can just get it out the way. This scripture is very clear. The father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand. John 5, 42. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Jesus Christ came in his Father's name. He did not come to glorify himself, and he didn't glorify himself. And he didn't receive honor from men. And he and he spoke and he taught that God is the one who honors him and bears witness of him. And to understand this, you have to understand a very fundamental doctrine of the scriptures. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And this fundamental, essential doctrine is the doctrine of what we call the Trinity. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's God. God eternally exists as three persons. The Father, Him, the Word, Him, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who is also called he, three he's, three persons. Now, people will debate this a lot, and this video is not to talk about, you know, the, the fact that God is three persons, but that is how we know that Jesus Christ did not come to glorify himself, but came to glorify his father, and he didn't come in his own name, but in the name of his father. Jesus said that if I bear record of myself, my record is not true. There is another which beareth record of me or which beareth witness of me. But that's not the point of this video. But you must understand that God is three persons. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we know God through his spirit. It is the spirit that searcheth the deep things of God and reveals them unto us. Because it's impossible to know 
God and the mind of God without the spirit of God. Again, the purpose of this video and this lesson is just to lay to bed and put to rest finally what the love of God is, the true love, the true love of God. And this is the true love of God. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Jesus Christ thought it not robbery to be, uh, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus Christ loves the Father and the Father loveth the Son. And the reason, and the only reason, we are loved of God. Because people say, well, God loves us. But the only reason that God loves us is because we believe in Jesus. Because without Jesus Christ, we are appointed to wrath. But the only reason that we are loved by God and that we will remain in the love of God is through Jesus Christ and the covenant that he established through his blood, which is called the new covenant. And if you want to challenge that, here's the proof. Prove all things. Try the spirits to see whether they are of God. Here it is. For the Father himself loveth you. Why? Because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Very clear. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me. This is Jesus speaking. And believe that I came out from God. Elsewhere, the scriptures teach that he that uh, believeth on the Son hath life. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. We are not appointed to wrath as the children of God. And therefore there is now no condemnation to them who walk after the Spirit. Because we are the sons of God. And it's manifest when we walk after the Spirit. The Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me. So the famous scriptures, the most famous verse in the Bible. It's John 3.16. It's one of the most famous. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse does not say or teach that God loves every single person in the world. This verse does teach for God so loved the world and so loved. If I said I so love something or I. I so do something. I'm saying, it's, he's saying in what way? In what way I do it? In what way he loved the world? And it says, for God so loved the world. So how did God show his love to the world? That he gave us his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's the key, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's implied that if you don't believe, guess what? You're not saved. Right there. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The love of God is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because we believe in him, Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And because we believe in him and we receive the word of God, and he is the word of God, that is his title, we are now loved of God. And that is a great thing. But it's very clear that God loves his son. He loves his children. And no man or woman can become a child of God without Jesus Christ. Jesus said from the beginning, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Nobody can become a son of God. But without Jesus Christ, who is the promised seed of Abraham. And that's Galatians chapter 3. Jesus Christ is the reason that God loves us. 
Jesus, God chose Jesus. He is the elect. He is the chosen one. And we by him. This is how we are accepted with God because we received his son, making us and giving us the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John fourteen twenty three, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hears is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Again, Jesus Christ is glorifying his Father. And very clear here, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. See that? If we love Jesus Christ and keep his commandments, God will love us. And he will come unto us and even manifest himself to us. And what does that mean? He's going to show us himself. We're going to see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And we see God through faith. And we understand God through faith, through the Spirit. And this is how we are accepted into the beloved. If you go down to John fourteen twenty eight. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Again, Jesus Christ is lifting up, exalting, and praising, and giving honor, not to himself, but to the Father. God is love, because God existed before the world began. God promised eternal life before the world began. This life is in his son, and he gave us his son. He's, he's crucified. He's, that's why Jesus Christ is the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, from the foundation of, of the world. But see, the thing about the God of Scripture, the true God, the only wise God, is the fact that he is love. The Bible teaches that God is love. I can't think of the exact Scripture reference, but it's a very famous Scripture. Even an atheist could quote it to you. God is love. Now, let's compare that to the false god of Islam, which is Allah. Okay? And Allah is oneness. It's just him alone. And the thing about the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, and the Father, and the Spirit, which dwelleth in us, is that they loved each other before the world began. The father loveth the son. Okay? They, the spirit teaches us these things. God's spirit teaches us this. This is the mind of God. This is the love of God. Is that the father loveth the son and have given all things to his hand. All things were made by him, for him, through him, unto him. All things consist. This is what the scriptures teach. The love of God, he loved before the world began. Now, the God of Islam, which is a false God, it's a, it's a devil or the devil himself. He just loves himself. I mean, he I don't even know if the Quran talks about love, but if there's no creation, who did he love? You know, before the world was, who did the God of Islam love? Himself, Right. Or did he need us in order to even know love, right? Because what was love and if it was, that's what's special about the God of the Bible, the God of Holy Scripture is that the Father loveth the Son. And we are accepted again into the beloved because we believe that Jesus came out from God. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you, because they didn't believe the one God sent. And he whom God sends is loved of God. And they didn't receive him. The Pharisees, the religious leaders of our Lord's time, they rejected, they didn't know God because Jesus said, if you, if you were of God, you would love me. He said this, I believe in John 8, because
because I proceeded and came forth from God. He said, if God were your father, you would love me. Okay. And anyone who rejects Jesus Christ does not know the love of God, period. I don't care what religion they are. I don't care what it is. If they're not saved, if they don't believe once you're saved, you're always saved, which is derogatorily referred to as once saved, always saved or easy believism, that all you have to do is believe and be saved and you're justified for God is the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus then ye are not aware or do not know the love of God. And this was a great realization for me because you often just assume love is this arbitrary thing or it's this like feeling. But the lo lo love is so much deeper than that once you understand true love. You understand that God is love. And we are loved. And God showed us his love when he gave us his son. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is love. And once you know that love, all other love is inferior. It's it's not worth it. <clears throat> Praise God for Jesus Christ, for sending us his son. And there's no way we can ever repay it, but we can obey. And that's why he said, you know, uh, when I was reading earlier in the scriptures about you know, he that loveth me keepeth my commandments, right? And he keepeth my words, keepeth my sayings. If you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. And the thing about that is we are born again, right? And he that is a born, he that is born of God does not commit sin. God does not love the wicked, okay? God does not love um, bloody men, deceitful men. God does not love vile persons. He does not love people who reject Jesus Christ. Now, God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. And he's willing that all should come to repentance. He wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But you have to understand that God is long-suffering, meaning that there's a time where he's going to not be suffering you. He's long-suffering. But he won't suffer the wicked and and he won't suffer um, unbelievers forever. That's why it's very important that if you are a man and you're hearing the truth of the gospel and the love of God, that you don't reject it because this is sacred. This is holy. The love of God is holy. It's separate. It's perfect and it's beautiful. And if you reject this love that he sent us his son to die for you, a sinner, right? God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Christ died for us. And if you reject this, God, I mean, he's, like I said, he's long suffering, but that implies that, you know, he's not going to suffer you forever, but he is long suffering. So he's going to do it a long time. And, and God is merciful and he's a, of a tender mercy and it repenteth him of the evil. And that's exactly who Jesus Christ is. He, he is our salvation. He shows us the love of God. He taught us the love of God. He taught us of the Father. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And just to attack another false religion, this is why oneness is false. Because guess what? Guess what? Oneness believes that God is just by himself. There are not three persons. They they say there are three, but I guess it's just three parts of God or there's three. They said that it's the Father, the Word, His literal Word, and His Spirit. And I, I don't know what they mean, but they basically say that God is only one person, not three persons. You know, like Jesus has uh, His own will. We believe Jesus Christ has His own will because He said, I came not to do mine own will, but the will of Him that sent me. And therefore, there's two wills there. But they believe God is one person, one will, one mind. And he's, he's not three. And, you know, that makes no sense in light of Genesis. You know, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And God said, let us go down and see. So oneness is false. The love of God is that the father loveth the son. And 
I really just want to stress that. Um, that is great. And that um, God doesn't love every single person. You know, God so loved the world. So he wants us to be saved. He wants, he, 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 you know, I believe God loves every little baby, you know, God loves every child. But if that child dies without believing in Jesus Christ, God doesn't love that, that person anymore. That person is now damned and condemned. He's condemned already because he hath not believed. And if you're being burnt and tortured in eternal flames with an eternal destruction, how can you call that love? That's not love. That is wrath and punishment and hatred. I don't see how you can go around it. Burning somebody forever and ever, causing them to die forever and ever. Is And this is God's judgment, by the way, is... I don't see how you can call that love. That is wrath and you don't do that to people you love. You do that to people that you hate. People that you don't accept. Because what's the synonym for hate? Because people often think like, you know, maybe one track mind would hate, right? And hate is something that you don't accept, something that you disdain, um, you disregard, you loathe it, you don't respect it, you disrespect it. Um, and what is love? It's something that you do accept, something that you cherish, something that you adore, something that you like, something that you hate is something you don't like. And therefore, God hates and he loves. And people, this is not popular, but if, if like, this, let's, let's just, I'm going to end it with this. If, if, you're, if you're an unsaved person and you're listening to this video and you're saying, does God love me? Listen, if you hear this gospel... John 3, 16, I, just, I gave it to you. You heard it, that he died for our sins, and then he was buried, and then he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. If you don't believe that in your heart, repent, change your mind, then there is no love of God for you. That is the love of God. If you don't accept that, then God, he's not going to love you, right? But if you believe that, then God's going to love you. Because he said, Jesus said, he, he, the Father himself loveth you because you have believed that I came forth from God. And, you know, you have to trust in him. You know, if you trust in God, he loves you. If you trust in the Son, he loves you. But if you're trying to earn your way to heaven and you're trying to go some other way and you're not obeying him, you're going to get wrath. And I wouldn't be worried about, well, does he love me even if I don't accept Jesus? You're a fool. You're a fool at that point. For asking such a silly question, the scriptures teach to avoid foolish questions. We preach the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel.